A new location for me. I hadn't fished Gulf Road part of Fiddingstow before, preferring the Manor End and Langard Point for winter codling fishing. This video is a record of two sessions employing different tactics. The first session is a scratching session in December, hoping for dabs. One rod is already out with a boom rig, and I'm hoping to use the Sheppy rig on my second rod. But first of all, I need to change the shock leader. So I'm tying on a length of 34 pound strength mono onto my 20 pound braid. Nothing complicated here, just a double uni knot. If you're new to this and need to see how this is done in more detail, then check out my video on white horses. I've placed a link to that in the top right hand corner. And since another people have asked if I do rig making videos, I just want to point out I have got a playlist of the videos which include rig making sessions that I've done so far. Eventually it will include all five rigs employed in this video. If interested, a link to that is also found above and in the description below this video. If needed, you can check out the community post which identifies which rigs are made in which videos. They have been incorporated in sessions where they have been successfully employed rather than just standalone. This ensures that the context for the use is also covered. Anyway, back to this leader knot, which is the one I use most of the time. Once you form the two uni knots, you need to pull them together and moisten them as you do so. Then cut off the tag ends, but not too close to the knot, otherwise this might slip under tension. Since the most common place for your line to part is at the leader knot, it is a good idea to check this now and again, and if necessary, replace your leader, as I've done in this situation. Just as I finish that task, I notice a knock on the rod which has already been cast out. I strike and feel something on, which is a great start. And it's a pouting which has taken lugworm on lower boom. So here are the two rigs I've set up for scratching. A sheppy rig on the left and a boom rig on the right. This sheppy rig has short snuds since I'm hoping for dabs. It has size 3 Nordic bend hooks and I've tipped the lugworm with some sprat. The boom rig has a breakaway continental lead but I swapped that over to a fixed grip lead later on in the session. There's a bit of a tidal pull and there are one or two snags here, so you don't want your rigs drifting about too much. Before casting out the Sheppy rig, I'll cover the locational details. Using Google Earth, I'm zooming in from eastern England to the Felixstowe area. It's just into Suffolk, to the south you've got the estuaries of a crouch in the Blackwater and Tendring Peninsula. To the north there are some well known Suffolk marks. Felixstowe is to the north of the mouth of the Orwell and Suffolk Stour. The Stour forms a natural border between Essex and Suffolk. I've identified nearby venues and then the best known marks in Felixstowe. Gulf Road is between the marks of Floodgers to the south and a dip to the north. It's adjacent to Brackenbury Cliffs and Kiosk. Parking is in the road itself, or a pay-for car park just above the beach huts. There's a promenade along the seawall at the base of the cliffs. There are wooden groins, with a couple of them having rock armour protecting the ends. I've identified the two locations I've fished for this video. I've got here a bit late and it's already nearing the top of the tide. That's not too much of a concern since I find that most of Felixstowe fishes better on the ebb. Keeping the rods fairly low since I fish for dabs and a few adjustments are needed.
After that initial success, there's not a lot happening. I didn't get any more bites over high water and the tide is now starting to ebb. Another hour down and I get a bite on a Sheppy rig. In it comes and it's another decent sized pouting. It may have taken a liking to the segment of Sprat tipping the lugworm. However, it's a pity there doesn't seem to be any dabs about, since that's what it's intended for. I fished the tide right down, but unfortunately no more bites followed. So this is rather a disappointing session. Two bites and two pouting. The third lockdown ruled out any more winter trips to Felixstowe. So the next time I was able to come here was in April. But this time I wasn't after dabs. I was half hoping a ray or two might be around. For them, fish baits are the order of the day. And I've just baited up Penold, very vast, big mouth, two O hooks on a pulley drop down rig. I'm fishing two rods with fish baits, with a third rod having already been cast out with a free hook clip down rig fishing lugworm. This one isn't targeting anything in particular and is my insurance against not getting any bites on the fish baits. Before I could bait up my second rod of fish baits, I notice a bite on the one which is fishing with lug. I strike into that and feel something on. Just like my previous session here, the first fish is not a whiting, but a pouting. Smaller than before, and I'm hoping that history is not going to be repeating itself. I was in two minds whether to fish at all. Having got to Felixstone, I've looked at a range of different venues, and I've not seen anyone fishing. The wind was very chilly and quite stiff northeasterly, and I didn't really fancy it. However, when I got down to the beach and looked over this stretch, and sat behind one of the groins, it didn't feel quite so bad, so I made a decision to go and get my gear. I chose a few bays away from the previous spot, and I started fishing about an hour and a half before the top of the tide. But I was thinking that that pouting on the first cast was a bad omen, since that's what happened last time I was here. Anyway, the pulley dropper rig has been cast out, and I'd be very grateful if I get a bite on this one. As I feel my way in, I just fish for two rods for the time being. Just want to see how strong the tidal pull is before I cast out my third rod. Fishing three rods can be a bit awkward. And the last thing I want to deal with is lines which have crossed and my rig's being tangled up.
plug them on a clip down rig needs replacing, so fresh stuff goes on. All my rigs today have leads with wires on them, a free hook rig having 170 gram lead, and a two rigs with fish baits having 200 gram leads. The reel on the rod I'm baiting up has 20 pound braid, but the other two rods have got 25 pound mono straight through. The tidal pull is from my left to right, and although the wind is onto the beach, it is also slightly in that direction as well. That means when I get down to the water's edge to cast, I am casting slightly to my left since the wind is taking the line and creating a bit of a bow. It's not a problem with the mono, but it is with the braid. I do like to try and tighten up as much as possible soon after casting. This part of the beach is quite steep and the tide's moving up quite quickly. The swash of breaking waves is now coming up to where I'm standing, so I don't need to move my gear. I don't need anything getting wet or knocked over if I'm playing the fish on one of the rods. I've set up close up to this groin since it's acting like a windbreak, so it's not as cold and nasty as I was fearing it was going to be. I'm not going to take any chances with rogue waves, so it's time to move a tripod up the beach. first snag encountered but I'm able to drag my pulley rig through it. The bluey baits come back untouched.
since I'm happy fishing with those two rods, I'm ready to employ my third one. This one's got a fairly short up and over rig. Once again, I'm fishing bluey with it, with a 2.0, but the panel hook is only a size 1. Before I cast out, we'll have a quick look at the gear I've set up and focusing on the rigs. The Gravel Technos Dewey is today's scratching rod, while the two with fish baits are the more powerful Kalmic 07s. I'm using all three with the splice tips. Having forgotten to bring one, I'm using the groin as my cutting board. Medium grade elastic is used to whip on and secure my bluey baits. I decided not to tip my lugworm with a bluey bait because that might attract more pouting or whiting. My pulley drop down rig has a long snud, while the up and over rig has a fairly short one. I've now made myself quite comfortable behind that groin and I can see the three rods quite easily. If I've got them raised higher than I normally would, I'm not having strained my neck having to look at the tips. The 
two fish baits still close enough for me to grab them should I get a bite. It's most likely to be a slow pull down, then spring back, and a slack liner. At least that's what I'm looking out for. My other rod needs to be a lot closer, since on that one I'm expecting quite quick snatch bites. Since all three tips are spliced, they bend quite nicely when tightened up to the leads. And there's one of those snatch bites I was just mentioning. And it's a double shot. And okay, so it might not be large, but this looks like a codling to me. Well, that's nice to see, and it is the first one I've had for a couple of years. high tide now and I'm getting plenty of action but it's all on the scratching rig. The other two rods have been motionless. Another good knock and this feels a lot better. Well, I was hoping for another coddling, but this dogfish will have to do. I didn't see a bite on this rod, but I'm going to bring it in just to check the bait. This is the up and over rig and all the blue is gone so at least something's taken an interest in that or I'd just like to have seen the rod slam down. There's other ways of doing this, but this is how I put my bluey on. I pass the main hook through a few times, then fold it over and secure it with medium grade elastic, making sure it's not fully cocooned. If there's a big gap between the point of a hook and its bend, I will add another strip of bluey in that place. 
the flesh side faces towards the point of a hook and I'm making sure that the point of a hook is left proud. If you put too much extra bait in this position then it will affect your hookup rates. Waves are getting larger so I'm having to move my tripod back a little bit. The bluey on the pulley dropper still hasn't been touched.
didn't take long to get another bite on the scratching rod. Another double shot, this time pouting and dogfish. Well, I'm glad I've brought the third rod, since it looks like all the actions on this one. If I'd fished two rods with worm bait, then it could have been a pretty hectic session. But I am trying to give myself a chance of catching an array. Yet another dogfish, but at least they're providing some sport and today they seem to prefer single lugworm rather than going for my bigger baits. The tide has just started to proceed and I get another snatch bite.
something different this time, the first of two writing, and a fairly large size. I was hoping for another cuddling, but the dogfish are still there on the ebb. The tide's been down for a couple of hours, and just as I started to pack away, I get a knock on the up and over rig, but it's not the ray I've been hoping for. A decent sized pouting to finish the day, and since I was in two minds as to whether to fish at all today, I suppose it is a bit of a result. However, if I had only fished with the two large bait rods, then this is all I would have ended up with. Like all sea fishing, you've got to catch it right, and I'm just glad I brought Lugworm with me today. Had I exclusively fished for big fish, then I would have ended up being disappointed. However, it was an enjoyable and busy day, and I'm glad I did catch that codling.